Hello, everyone. Welcome on into another episode of the Lock In Podcast. It's me, KTL, here with my buddy Stro, and we have the MVO, the most valuable, valuable otter, brother Otter. How you doing, brother? I'm good. How are you? Doing good, man. Happy to have you on board. I know we've been talking about setting this up for a while, as you know, other people hate because they're not on here. But you know, we, we hand pick these people. What can I say? Stro, how you doing, buddy? Feeling good? Oh, doing good. It's, good man. Uh, good, good to hear. Yeah. We always have some good games to talk about, too. Yeah. Uh, group stage is behind us in Grand Tournament, but we'll talk about that in uh, just a minute. Uh, we have Otter online with us, so I want to talk to you, Mr. Otter, you know, man to Otter, about uh, the your experience in the LAS, you guys' first season with us, um, you know, playing in a pretty tough division, I think, after looking at the regular season and how things have performed in Grand Tournament, I would say that division was probably the hardest division in Tier 1, what were your thoughts about LAS and about, you know, the division you got placed in and the overall results from the regular season? Uh, I guess the first thing is you thought our division was the hardest one? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say so because for, well, if Moist, from, we're just going to assume that if Moist is in Grand Tournament, they probably make it out of groups. So you're talking about four teams making it out of groups because B team, like what we'll talk about later, made it out of groups, right? Which is something that there's no other four seed from no other division that made it out. So I would say it probably makes us pretty pretty good group, I would say. Uh, I mean, so during our division, I would probably say it was kind of pretty skewed. Yeah. Obviously, like, B-Team has, like, made a resurgence and, like, is somehow just going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what my uh, my son, Mr. Goat Bear, is doing, but he's going crazy with his team. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, looking at the division, I thought it was pretty top sided with it. It was like us and Moist from Mermaid, um, and then other than that, everyone else was kind of just like fighting for their lives. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of my view on on the division. Obviously, it didn't go as well as we'd hoped. <laughs> uh. <laughs> In my eyes, we should have came out first. Uh, there's a bit of a griefing uh, going on. By but, a certain uh, somebody we won't name. But we, we both uh, yeah, know who he... it is. Me and you both know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows. He knows. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. That's kind of my thought on the division itself. Yeah, so going into Grand Tournament, now you play against teams from other divisions. You kind of had a division that only had two other teams, but uh, you did get put in a division with Warriors, which was considered one of the strongest teams in the league before like their collapse in playoffs. Kind of similar to you guys, I thought you guys were both on like, the same trajectory, where like you both won regular season pretty handily, and then kind of came up short at the end of the postseason. What were your thoughts playing against a team like that in the uh, group stage? Um, well, one thing that sticks out to me is that there seems to be a lot of teams in the league that really play through topside mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Yeah. But that was one of them. Um, and we'll get into, uh, the next series later on, I'm assuming. Yeah. Like us versus Mint. But they're one of those teams that, like, play through top and just like, okay, well, we kind of just have to, like, shut down their split pushing and like it's pretty easy and then yeah that uh the first game versus warriors it was pretty close uh i mean the drafts that we had our i thought our draft was like pretty good um it was kind of just like a death ball comp mm -hmm. and then theirs was like super safe and super team fighting so it made like i'm sure from the viewer standpoint it was like these teams of just two different styles just going at each other. Uh, I'm not sure what their read on us was, mm -hmm. um, but um, I thought they were a decent team. Uh, and then I thought Big Magnum was kind of just a, a joke. Yeah, I mean, tier two team is always going to be uh, pretty hard to compete with two really strong tier one teams. I mean, we're talking about like, Two of the MVPs from the entire league were playing against each other in the same division. Doesn't normally yep. happen, right? So you, how, what did you think of Kiru? Obviously, you both finished as MVPs in your divisions. What were your thoughts on Kiru just as the matchup in the isolation? Um, I thought it was good. Um, 
I kind of had a pretty good prep against him of like what he was gonna do. Um, and he, the only thing that kind of like threw me off was like a couple of the picks, but other than that, it wasn't anything that I wasn't expecting. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew he liked to play aggressive stuff aside from Victor, but if like Victor was open, they kind of just grabbed that. Yeah. Um, that's that was my read on it at least. Um, but overall, I thought he was thought he was pretty good. Nice. Sure, you have any questions for Mr. Otter? Um, I mean, it's kind of like I'm branching off what you said earlier. Have you like noticed like between the the divisions, like how there's like individual metas kind of going on? Because like I feel like against us, you guys like your Ziggs prio obviously was extremely high against us, but then like I see you against like other series and like you guys just draft different. Is that due to like <laughs> mini metas that you see? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> so, the Ziggs, honestly, is kind of just like, it's kind of like a meme, to be honest, and and this isn't anything like giving away any strats, like, yeah, we play a lot of Ziggs, like, it's it's out in the open, like, everyone knows that. Uh, if they want to ban it, sure, go ahead, like, it's fine. Um, as far as just, like, not picking it, even when it's open, uh, it kind of just goes with, like, what we it changes during draft. Like, I mean, sometimes it looks like a good Ziggs game. Sometimes it looks like we got to pick something else. Um, as far as like seeing like different like metas from other teams, like the only thing that I've really noticed and I mentioned it before was a lot of teams for some reason, just play through top side a lot. That's the only thing I've really noticed. Yeah, definitely with, especially the teams that you've played, right? Warriors, huge about their top lane. Your next team, which we'll go into now um, with Mint, is a team that I think pretty much only plays through top lane. I think that's their only, like, avenue. We're going to have to see. I I don't know oh, yeah. what to feel about Mint, man. Like, this team, I thought going into the season they are going to be so good. The roster looked incredible, and they've just fallen flat every time. So I don't know where to put Mint anymore. But, uh, you know, we'll get, we'll talk about Mint later. So, um, you know, I, I just had some general questions about Elysium. Um, I noticed that um, in the end of the regular or right end of the postseason going into Grand Term, you guys made the switch in jungle, which I think, although I do think Romeo is a good player, I do think I can see where you guys decided to go with kill switch. Was was it just purely off of the style of champs that they're playing, Otter, or what was the reason for the switch? Uh it was not anything performance based. Yeah, that's what I figured. I, I figured it was probably more it just was, the champs. Uh it wasn't even that. Uh it was I mean, I don't want to go into too much detail, mm-hmm. but Romeo just had a lot of stuff going on in real life. Gotcha. Uh, and it kind of inhibited us from scrimming. It doesn't um, matter. So <laughs> we kind of just had the choice of or just had to make a decision of like do we just run it with Romeo or do we make the change? Yeah, I mean, and uh, we chose to make the change, obviously. I, I definitely understand that. I think there's probably another team that is probably going to have a pretty similar discussion, which we'll talk about later. But I, I do think there's another team that's in that similar situation that, that you were in. Gonna have to see what their decision is going to be because. I do think it cost them the number one seed. I mean, I'm hinting at it. We'll talk about it later. But I do think they lost the number one seed because of some things, not performance based, but maybe internet based. Uh, so, but we'll talk about that later. But uh, for right now, we're gonna go into the bracket, pull it up so everyone can see it there at home. So our bracket is drawn as such: that is Elysium versus Mint, Ragnarok versus Tempest, huge matchup. Uh, Gods versus Teg, and then B Team versus Warriors. Uh, Otter, what were your thoughts of the bracket just for you as a player on Elysium? Did you th- obviously I think this is the stronger side of the bracket. What were your thoughts about it when you saw it all get pulled out? Um, I mean the matchup that sticks out to me and I'm assuming it's the same for you guys as well is series 2. Yeah. Um, I'm interested of how that series goes. Um, because I know the two mid laners on each of those teams like to play some interesting picks, let's yeah, say. I agree. Um, so that will be a good series to watch. I'm assuming that will be streamed. Yeah, it more than likely will be. 
Gotcha. Uh, and then the other matchups, I think they're like, I think they're pretty even for the most part. Um, for series two, I have no idea who's gonna win. That's like a coin car cost. Uh, if I had the, I'm assuming you kind of want to see what my thought. Of, yeah, yeah. Uh, give me, give me your thoughts here of what you see. What, what, yeah, give me a prediction of who you see as the top four teams, right? So. Eliminating one team. Obviously, this is a single elimination at this point of the bracket, right? So, four of these teams have to be eliminated. Give me your thoughts on who are going to be the four teams that make it out. Uh, I think B team is going to smash Warriors. Okay. Based on how they've been playing, and based on the fact that... um. I didn't really think that Warriors was really that great when we played them. I think B team is kind of just on this like title wave of just rolling through teams for some reason. Somehow they're going crazy. Like I said before, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what this, I, I would probably say, let's say, let's say three, one B team for that. Okay. And then, TG versus Gods. Gods is like the only team other than Mint that I've only like started to prep for. Um, Gods is the only other team that I'm not really familiar with. Um, I don't know what their par power level is. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they did in their division. Um, if I had to guess, honestly, I think T uh, TEG probably wins. Uh, probably three two. If I had to guess, make it a make it a banger banger series. Yeah, hopefully we don't um, get swept. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> uh, and then <laughs> us versus Min. I mean, Hopium. I think we're gonna win. Yeah. Um. I think it'll probably be... I think we'll drop a game, probably. And Caleb will probably hate me for saying that. Uh, but I think we'll probably drop a game. Uh, it'll probably be a 3-1. Yeah. Uh, and then... Rag versus Tempest. I would love to see a Brother YouTube go crazy and smash out uh, um, the clown that is Cinder Ace. <laughs> Not sure how people keep allowing him to play at least mid lane and get away with it. Yeah, it's uh, but it's definitely something. He's got to be stopped. He's got to be. He's got to be put down. So I'd like to say Tempest will win that, but that will probably go to five games if I had to guess. Yeah, I I definitely think it's gonna be an incredible matchup. Uh, Stro, I'll bring you in now. Obviously, um, coming off of uh. I'll call it a shaky group stage that we had. Uh, shaky week one into a pretty dominant week oh, yeah. two. Um, what were your thoughts on group stage as a whole through all of Grand Tournament for all the teams? Because obviously we watched a lot of other matches. So what were your thoughts about it as a whole? I mean, obviously B team, huge surprise factor. but And I, I would even say even God, huge surprises for winning oh, yeah. that division. But uh, what what are your thoughts about it? Um, I mean, I think like the teams that like I predicted to get out did get out. I think the seating obviously was a little thrown off. Um, like once again, I think the the mint not being a one seed, I kind of had pretty high expectations again for them. Mm -hmm. I even said I'd hope you for them, but overall, I mean, obviously like the big surprises was B team and gods. Everything else kind of. Obviously, we had that tough week one. Yeah. Um, but we simplified things in week two and had a solid one. But overall, everything went pretty on par with what I expected. And now these these matchups, so this is gonna be a fun one. Um, I do think Elysium is a superior team. Um, I think. I'm just going to go along with Otter here. I'm just going to say 3 1. You, I mean, it's best of five. Yeah, Teams are prone to dropping one. Yeah, you can um, have a bad draft. You know, maybe forget to drop a yeah. P. Diddy champ or two. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Rag, Whoa, the rag Tempest. 
<laughs> Rag Tempest, I would I also have to agree. I feel like this is by far the most on paper contentious matchup. Obviously, um if Fish's internet is not iffy, yeah. I, I do think that I'm gonna be kind of like the the difference here and I'll say three one Tempest. I, I think they also have something to prove after their subpar for them subpar um group stage mm. so i think they're gonna kind of hit rag hard um us versus gods i think you know with how we played week two of groups i feel like we're just like we, we're working that consistency factor depending on what take shows up if we're if we're really on i'll also say three one also but if have a we get, like, <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> um, so as long as everything's there and we're like keeping the same draft plan that we had last week and just how we're playing the game, I will say us three one. Otherwise, I do think it will go five. And then the team versus warriors. I do have some inside information. Uh, Colin will be playing from an RV on a hotspot. So. Yeah. Uh. I think Warriors obviously has had a downward trajectory since they lost to Tempest there. Um, and obviously, like, they got out and we only had, like, it was a three-team group, so they couldn't really prove it against another team. Mm-hmm. But I think this will be a close series as well. I'm going to just edge out and say it is B-team because A-team is on some kind of roll right now. The and... DRX form. Yeah, they're on their like deaths going for worlds thing and from last season and uh hopefully I, I kind of have hope for them. I do like uh only soul and caller. Um boys with both of them and I, I wish them the best of luck. Only so far though. Yeah. Obviously. But I think yeah, just straight down it's uh Elysium, Tempest, us and B team. Yeah, so uh, pretty similar between the two of you. I am going to agree for the most part. I definitely know that, I mean, from insider information, because, you know, I shared Discord with Tempest, that uh, they were pretty upset that they lost. Um, obviously, Fisher's Internet is something that's going to have to be looked at. Um, I do know they have backup plans in contingency in case they need to, kind of how I was talking about it before when I was mentioning about Romeo, where, you know, sometimes a team might have to make that decision to switch their roster. So we're going to have to see what Tempest wants to do. I do know they've been actually been scrimming. I don't think they've literally scrimmed for like a month and a half. And now they're finally scrimming again for the first time because they lost the B team. So I guess sometimes you just need that wake-up call. It'll be like, hey, you know, you're going to lose the team sometimes. So you need to practice. Um, as far as I'll go down the order with you guys, I think Alicia Mint is a 3-0 or a 3-1. That's okay. if uh, Elysium can draft, which I have faith that they will. I think they 3-0. I What's think, drafting? yeah, I think if uh, if P Diddy gets some of his champs, but I it's such a great matchup because like I talked about it when we were talking when we were doing the the draw for this bracket, I think SG and P Diddy are like clearly the two best top players in the entire league, so seeing them battle will just be really fun. Um, obviously I'm expecting Mint for P Diddy to get a lot of ban losses. I'm really also curious to see the level of Mint with their starting roster because they haven't played with their starting roster all of group stage. They've used a sub AD. That. Yeah, they use a sub AD for every single match. So I'm really curious to see with the return of we'll show them all um what happens to that team. But uh, I definitely favor Elysium right now. As far as Rag Tempest, I think Tempest is the better team. Um after playing against Ragnarok twice, and I would say I don't it, it's harder for me to tell how when they were already secured 5-0 they're playing us the last game of the day it, it's hard to see maybe how serious they were being in that match but i do think that we unlocked a way to beat them um now whether or not tempest catches on to what we did against them will be left to be seen but i do think tempest is just one of the strongest if not the strongest team in the league if they are all playing with good internet um so that'll be a, uh, a a really good series. I could see it being a 3-1. I could see it being a 3-0. I could th- see it being a five-game series. It just 
really just depends on because I do think Tempest is the hardest team to draft against because they have so many things you have to account for. Their top winners a Kane one tr- or a, a uh, what's the name of that? A Kled one trick. Uh, yeah, their their mid laner is YouTube. You know he plays a Kali, he plays Kiana, he plays Silas, he plays all these different champs. Their ADC plays Ash every game. So like, and then their supports a Rel one trick. So you know there's a lot of things to juggle in bands for that team. So I think it'll be pretty much be on Cinderace to see and you know the supporting cast of Rag to see how they do against Tempest um in drafting, right? Um God's tag, I don't want to get too into because I play in this series, but I do think it's tag favored. Um played against gods on a Warriors team back in the day and kind of smashed them. So I am really favoring tag with our, you know, playing up to the level we played like we like Stro said in the previous week. So I will say it's tag favorite. And then B Team Warrior, I think it's honestly probably the like even though I think Rag Tempest should be the hardest game to call, I do think it's actually just Warriors B team is the hardest game to call. But uh with Warriors downward trend like we kinda talked about, and I think they've really just been lost in draft with the metas running away from what they've kind of been doing in regular season especially. They don't really feel like they have a draft identity. I think Woody's kind of been struggling. The mid jungle has been the best. Uh, it's pretty much just been on Kakalan. And like what you said from like insider information, that Kakalan might not be playing on the best of, uh, let's just say, uh, internet and uh, you know a situation to play the game in, not in his normal setup. I think it favors B team. I don't know how good B team actually is, um, because. You know, they, they beat some teams that they were supposed to beat, and then they beat Tempest once, we'll say legitimately, the second time was a little bit questionable because the jungler just kept he's seeing in the middle of fights. But uh, I do think uh, B-Team is a pretty good team. Gonna have to see how they stack up against Warriors. Obviously, still a very good team to take in competition, too. So I would agree. I think those are the four teams. I think the games might be a little more stompy than we think, but again, we'll just have to see. That's the nature of these best of fives. It I mean, a lot can change game to game on drafting. But uh, now we're going to go into a segment that I made here. We'd usually power rank teams off of like S, A, B, whatever, you know. Now I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask you, Otter, first. We're going to have, I'm going to make you pick four teams that you think are legitimate title contenders. And then four teams that you think are the dark horses. So maybe not the favorites. So you can go ahead and give me your four title contenders that you think are the ones that are you can include your team, obviously, as the ones that you think are the ones that are going to go for that, uh, going to go for the for the crown. Oh no, we're losing, bro. Oh, okay, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Put us as a dark horse. Okay, bro. okay, let's be real though. <laughs> uh, all right. So seriously, I think we are a contender. Obviously, um, yeah. I think there are a lot of strong teams in the league. Um, the next team. I would probably put Tempest yeah. as a contender. And then I think TG is a contender. And I'm not just saying that because you guys are here. <laughs> I, I, I seriously think you guys there, are. There is no gun held to his head. I promise, guys. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> uh, and then... I mean, we've been talking about it. I think B team is unironically a contender. Yeah, and, it's... and the current state of B team, they are a contender unironically. Which is so crazy, right? This is a team like if we can just talk about it for a second. This is a team that won a single best of three to qualify for grand tournament. They won a best of three in the regular season against the the, the, la- the last place team that was Kamikaze Penguins, and then they beat them again in playoffs. So they beat a single team to get to grand tournament. And then they come in as a four seed, don't get a good drawing because I don't think Tempest and ABB is a good drawing, in my opinion, for it comes to the group. And they just beat them. Like, I just don't know. Agree. So it's. I feel like they, got, they hit a hard group. Yeah, they hit a hard group and they just beat them all. I don't know if it's just because they're just all leveling up at the right time or the meta's hitting their favor. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, I definitely would agree with these uh, title contenders. Obviously, now we have the final four for the Dark Horses. Tell me why you think they are, you know. Uh, a cut below these teams um i mean i guess we should start with uh ragnarok okay um i think based on what i've seen and what i've heard 
that that team lives and dies by mid lane. Mm -hmm. If Cinderace doesn't get ahead, that team just crumbles. Um, so, I mean, I would assume the logical game plan is, well, just shut down mid. Yeah. Or, at the very least, neutralize it. Exactly. And especially, like, I feel like Ragnarok would probably be a little... In my personal list, they'd probably be a little higher up. But since they have such a tough... Like, imagine, like, being a one seed and your reward is getting, like, a very angry, upset Tempest team. Like, I feel like that's just so rough. Uh, So, it definitely feels like that is the hardest of... I mean, besides maybe... Elysium themselves, right? But they can't get them because they're also a one seed. So I think, like, of the two seeds, it's probably the two seeds you didn't want to get. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think you'd probably have more insight as you guys just played them Yeah. Uh, in, in your group. Uh, obviously, I saw that you guys beat them. I didn't, like, look into it deeply, but, um, I mean, they're, they're clearly, uh, clearly able to be defeated yeah um so it's just up to the teams if they're up for the task to to beat them yeah i mean it's as, it's as simple as that um yeah. for mint i mean like i mentioned before i've only like recently started to uh scout for them um i think i have a pretty good read on them we'll see how uh well people listen to me <laughs> uh and we'll see how how correct i am based off my analytics uh obviously uh people are familiar with analytics you can only go so far with that it's kind of like a baseline so yeah things will change during the season or uh, during the series so uh warriors i've kind of already talked about them i don't think that they're good i think they're kind of unironically uh if people were paying attention to Gen Chat uh, during regular season, I was memeing a lot of the time, calling uh, Moist for Mermaids, Moist for Frauds. Mm -hmm. um, I think Warriors is probably Frauds, for sure. Um, and then Gods, as I mentioned, I'm not familiar with them. I, I don't know what their play style is. Yeah. So that that's why they're a dark horse as well. Yeah, I definitely would agree. I agree with a lot of this list. Uh, I'm gonna move it back down here. Everyone back down. I'm gonna let Mr. Stro here give me his thoughts. Let me just make sure I have all this done. So Stro, give me uh, give me. Like, let's just go with one one name off the list here that you think uh, you know, is your 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 title contender. Which which team do you think is is that? Is this one team here? Well, let's just do one at a time. You know, let's just let's break okay. it down one at a time. Um, obviously Elysium is the start. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Elysium, obviously, I think is a very strong team. Plus, on top of it, uh, I think that they got a good draw. I think, um, like you said, and I agree. I think SG will match up pretty well in the P Diddy. Um, obviously it, it's gonna be a tough one for like, you know, making sure that P Diddy doesn't get it out of control, but if as long as like I said, he's neutralized or put behind, it should be fine. I think overall they're solid and with how they looked in groups, I, I think this is pretty an easy one to put mm -hmm. up there. Um I gotta put Tempest because I did pick them to win over Rag. Unfortunately, like we stated, Rag is. I would put them there if I could put five. I would. Um, but Tempest, I think, as long as Fish's internet is good, I, I think this team has leveled up. I think their playstyles have started to align. I think with Tommy going back support, I think that's been a huge factor. Mm -hmm. Um, I, lo I love Don Lino. I'm not trying to say Don Lino is a problem, but I think it's it just there's better team synergy overall. Um, I have very I have a lot of faith in them to step up to rag. I don't like Tyler said it's through Cinderace. Mm -hmm. That's what we noticed in our series against them. Um, then going to our side of the bracket, it's got to be uh, TG. I mean, I think. Gods kind of 
drew a ideal group for themselves. Um, I did think they were going to be a two seed, but they got the one seed, which is huge for them. But I do think that with how TEG looked week two, um, it was a major step up. I mean, just if if you could compare just how the games were played from week one to week two, um, there's proactivity. There was like, you know, TG just looks solid. Obviously, I have more background because I watched all of those games. Um, so I have I have faith that they'll continue their their stride into this groups. And then obviously, you gotta give it to B team. They're just, you know, every team in any sport, it's always. Okay, get hot at the right time, and I think B team is the literal definition of that. Mm-hmm. They're they are hot at the right time, everything's just clicking. I mean, I, I like you said we play against them in regular season, and they didn't look like much of anything regular season, but they've really stepped it up, and I think they will edge out Warriors. All right, and give me now the uh, <clears throat> give me your thoughts here on these dark horses. I'm going to give them all hopium. I'm going to go through that. Uh, one, Rag, yes. You guys had a very, very solid group stage. You guys, like, they need to figure out ways to either accelerate Cinderace or get the bot lane going. Um, I think if they can get Cinderace and the bot lane going, I think they can save a chance against Tempest, but they really have to level up their gameplay. In the bot lane, <clears throat> I think I'm not trying to say that they're, like they're terrible. I'm just saying that to step up to Tempest, they need to figure that out. Mm-hmm. Um, if they can get two lanes in the positive, they can do it. And I think they can kind of rally back strong. Warriors, you gotta somehow find that like magic that you've had in the regular season. Find what you had in the early playoffs. Go back to that. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes it looks like they're just like I was a little too scared to do stuff. Go back to that, like more like a lax play style, just kind of do what works. And I think they can make that contest, especially B team. You know, a lot of people might say, like, you know, they did look weak in the regular season. So maybe Warriors might, you know, step back up and B team might step down. Who knows? Yeah. Mint, I think getting will show them all back is huge for them. I think they've played way too many series without him having P Diddy. And we'll show them all. And the rift at the same time is huge. But also, you have to step up to Elysium. I'm not trying to make them scared, but it's going to be a pretty uphill battle. Listen, and um, their mid laner only plays artillery mages. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> artillery mage pantheon. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to hit it with gods. I'm going to give them hopium. Even though we're playing against them, I am boys with Mac. Um, they they've rallied back strong. They play around mid a lot. They're gonna need a level of consistency against Peg's bot lane, in my opinion. I I think hey, God's me. bot lane. Yeah, I think I think uh, God's bot lane really needs to step up to the level. And I'm also just gonna say another thing. I think Strangle really stepped up going into week two. So Max also got to step his game up to go against Strangle Root. Yeah, I think it's a really good list now. I'll go over my list really quickly here. Uh, I want to just put everyone down. Uh, I'll go strictly from one to four. I think the best teams are in the tournament phase, regardless of the seeding that they or the, the matchups they might have gotten. I do still think Elysium is the best team in the league. Uh, we have to see Copium. if they can continue their strong play after um, beating uh, Warriors. So I do think Elysium, I mean, I thought they were the strongest team after playoffs, even though they lost to Moist. I just think they had a bad adaptation to how Moist wanted to play the game, uh, which is why they lost that divisional banner. But uh, I do think they are a really strong team. Uh, I'm going to put Tempest out there in second. I do think Tempest is the second best team. Uh, just depends on their internet and not being cocky, I think, is pretty important for that team. Um, actually practicing like they're doing now. Like it, Sometimes you just got to get that slap in the face. You know, they were all high and mighty after beating Warriors finally, and I think it just got to them. And they hadn't practiced in a while. So I think with this new roster, 
I do think they are a good team. I do think there are ways to beat them. Um, because I don't think their top and bot lane are the strongest. I think, uh, but I mean, if they continue to get like you know their one tricks, and yeah, I think they're going to be really strong. That's where the battle. That's where the battle comes with playing Tempest, right? Is like, what one tricks do you really want to hurt? I definitely think, in my opinion, it should be the top and the bot lane. But we're going to have to see if they want to follow that plan or not. Because in my opinion, I think you should be trying to attack the bands on the top and the bot lane. And uh, try and get yourself favorable matchups, but we'll see. Um, going into number three here, I am going to still put Ragnarok. I do think Ragnarok's a very good team. They're a divisional winner. They came out first place in their group. Had a shaky last game, but I think they were pretty dominant against literally everyone else. So I do favor Ragnarok as the third, be third best team in the league, even though they have to play against the second best team. Again, another be reason to watch the best of five. But um, I do think Ragnarok is... A really good team need to see step up performance by their top lane and their bot lane looked extremely weak in the last game of the day we played against them but uh so i need to see more from their top lane and their bot lane uh, i think gunny's been really good it's just more on the ad and on their and on their top laner um probably not cooked so much in those lanes and just leave the cooking to the mid lane and then trying to give their jungler proactive junglers i think there's a very stark difference between when this guy is playing proactive early game junglers and when he's playing farming junglers so i'll leave it at that and then the fourth best team i think it's still tag um i still think even with b team's sudden explosion i still think they're a dark horse in my opinion i think they have a pretty easy matchup against warriors which i'll get into a little bit later but i still think from regular season playoffs into grand tournament i still think tech is a better team you know, maybe I'll have to eat those words when we play against them, if we play against them in the future. But uh, I, I, I do think, while I do think B team is hitting strides at the right time, I do think they're also other teams making a lot of errors in draft against them and giving them a lot of champions they should not be. So we'll see how better teams that draft better against them will, will handle it. As far as the Dark Horses, I am going to rate B-Team as that first Dark Horse um, really strong Grand Tournament after really weak showing in groups or in, uh, in playoffs. I think uh, they play they rely on their bot lane a lot. And I think when teams start to realize that is when they'll start having problems because I think it's pretty much on their bot lane to show up every game and win them the game, especially on Sushi Wushi. Really good mechanical player. So I don't really think attacking champions against him is the best because he's just a strong mechanical player strong mechanical players will play well in every matchup i think more it's about attacking their playmakers which is their sun goat and uh unwanted soul so i think that's where people should be attacking them but we're gonna have to, have to see uh, how that happens same kind of problem for warriors i think they're still they're a very one man team as well obviously mostly in the Kakala front i think warriors has not done a really good job on a Making adaptations in their drafting, it seems like they just do the same thing that I've been flaming them for for literal weeks on this podcast, where they early pick their bot lane and they just leave them to die because they don't they pick them early, they don't get good bot lane matchups, and they lose the game off of it. And uh, then their mid, top, and jungle just can't perform to the level of other teams that they're playing against. So I do think it's a more... This, this specific matchup against B team, they need to draft for their bot lane late. I think they can get away with picking for their soul lanes and their jungle earlier because I do think their players are better in most of those roles. Uh, so I do think the way for Warriors to win is to just draft their bot lane later on in the draft to get themselves favorable matchups because they are the ones that have been struggling the most. And then I'll go uh, Gods because I do think Mintz has been the most underwhelming team, I think. So I'll go with Gods quickly. Uh, God is another team where if they get the draft, if they get the picks that they want, specifically in the mid lane, they kind of just they kind of just win games. But if they don't get those those lanes, and they're targeted more in bands, we're gonna see what happens, especially when we play them, and the level of consistency from their bot and their top lane. I think it's been mostly about their mid jungle. So we're gonna have to see how they perform against teams that have strong overall laners in every lane, and then for mint. Um, just the biggest wild card. I don't know what to expect of this team anymore. Like I said in the intro, this team, I wouldn't be surprised they lose 0-3. I wouldn't be surprised if they win 3-0 because their roster is good, but they just don't perform. So 
that's what I'll leave you guys in mint. Uh, you know, I uh, I hope you guys have a better showing because I think it would have been a pretty weak overall season if uh, there's not very much uh, fight against Elysium. But uh, that's what we play the games for, right? That's why uh, we play the games. We're not just here to uh, make our guessing. But that's what I think the top four teams are. Obviously, one of those title contenders will be eliminated in the first games on Sunday. So uh, make sure you watch it. But uh, yeah, I think with that, I think we're going to wrap it up. Mr. Otter, Mr. MVO, thank you so much for uh, coming on the podcast. And uh, Stroh, again, oh, as always, thank you for uh, coming on and being on with me. But uh, that'll be it for us. You can catch this live uh, probably later tonight. On This will be recorded on Friday. And then we'll have our draft league playoffs is tomorrow on Saturday. And then our best of fives for grand tournament start on Sunday. So uh, make sure you catch those. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.